Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Angel Bobs. Today I've been working on a, a, the next stage of the uh, module production. So if you rem I don't know if you remember but in a much earlier episode we got up to module levels 2 because that was fairly straightforward. All it needed was stuff, basically stuff I already had and a little bit of fairly simple com combining of things down here along with these crystals that I needed anyway for the research packs. But then modules 3 um, takes speed logic board or logic boards is the appropriate thing and that takes these polished blue crystal shards um, and I think that's the next step up let me just check that because I'm pretty sure it was uh, yeah so you go from splinters up to shards that was that that's that's what I was uh, that's that's right so I don't know if you remember but uh, for making the splinters we had these uh, all these fish swimming around merrily in these tanks here and they were producing the polluted water which I was crystallizing out to get these um, these yellow crystals which you could then chop up into splinters and we then polish them in these machines here and then ship them off in the train back to the um, back over to the other over onto the main bus in order to turn them into modules so the next step up the shards are a similar idea but I needed to investigate um, growing and slaughtering biters in pens as opposed to just going out and you know killing them in the wild as I've been doing for ages and that's quite a long and convoluted process as you can see from this diagram here um, and one of the so I, I worked through that gradually uh, the, there's a couple of ingredients that were fairly straightforward one was these um, I think these are acidic puffer eggs and they were one of the side effects from all these puffers I've got going on down here so I went along to the uh, the warehouse here pulled all of those out and chucked them in there's about a hundred or so of them and that worked out quite nicely and also the um, the little yellow crystals are the ones that are being produced but from the uh, polluted fish water so I've got an extra system here that's now producing a few more of them as you can see they're going onto this belt and being taken all the way down over here where they're being put in halfway down the the, uh, the system so we also though there's also quite a lot of extra stuff we needed so the polluted fish water also gets turned into um oh god was this alien bacteria i think alien spores which we piped around here along with some um red algae which was made from uh, ammonia and thermal water into oh goodness knows what this was um and so on into into the alien alien bacteria spore things then fed that round here um along with some you know, I've forgotten what half. Oh, this is hydrochloric hydrochloric acid that that was needed for um, for growing the alien bac alien bacteria uh, with some wood pulp and some salt. No, oh, I only did this earlier today. Uh, sodium hydroxide, I think. No, not sodium. Whichever one this is, um, that was then made into some paste, combined yada yada yada, all the way down all the way down the um, down the chain. Made some petri dishes. Put they put the paste in the petri dishes, added the alien bacteria to make these seeded dishes, added crystals to that as well to make these crystal dishes. <laughs> and those are made then into, um, oh and also making um, another type of crystal. Fed all of that along with the um, along with the crystal shards that we're making, uh, splinters sorry, that we're making in, in here and we're able to turn those into eggs along with, and this was along with the, um, the puffer eggs we talked about earlier. And that's why these have stopped, that's my limiting factor here. I'm not able to make any more because I don't have enough of those um, acidic puffer eggs. But then we could feed that round here. This uh, was then going into these into these uh, biter pens. But I also needed to keep the biters fed. So not only does it need nutrient pulp that I'm making from my um, from my vegetation that I'm, I'm uh, com composting down, it also requires meat. So all those fish that are coming out of the fish tanks now instead of instead of having the uh, fish petting zoo or whatever it was called that um, turns fish in, that, that reduces the number of fish you've got I'm now passing them all down here to these butchery stations which are turning them into meat which is then getting mixed with some more alien back alien bacteria turned into alien goo which makes alienized meat oh good grief um, and that can then be fed over here to hatch the eggs and turn them into biters phew right so that's the um, that's the first stage that's as far as the diagram goes but there's a bit more to it than that once you've got the eggs you can then and what's rather once you've got the eggs you can then hatch them and they will turn into either these um, adorable little medium biters and when there's only half a dozen pickles in them they um, almost do look adorable and then they're fed over to here and now there's two types of biters coming out of this there's the um, generic medium biters which I'm feeding around through all of these machines and these ones along when there's enough meat coming through will basically turn turn the biters into slightly fewer biters and a load of crystals so that's being pumped out up, up this way let's see if we can find one that's about to finish no, none of them are running. Never mind that. Then there's no, there's no food available for them. That's the problem. 
Um, but also there's another type. There's the queen biters. And if you put two queen biters in a in one of these together with with some food and some nutrient pulp, um, they ignore the sort of the the basics of reproduction. And uh, the two queens then produce 1.99 queens and some biters. I think it's one and a half biters because th this this is down to probabilities. So. Um, Let's just check this out. Yeah, so we get the, the food, the two biter queens, some nutrient pulp, and you get 1.99 um, biter queens on average. So you're gradually losing them. So it's important to make sure you've got a few more coming through from eggs. But you also get one and a half eggs out as well. Um, and then the eggs can be turned into a 97.5% chance of a medium biter and 2.5% chance of a queen. And I think that means so each, each time you run it, you're losing 1% of a queen and gaining one and a half eggs. And each one and a half eggs is going to turn into um, oh dear, the math the math is difficult here. So yeah, so that that is going to be in the long run that is going to produce more more of the biter queens than it uses up. So this is eventually going to produce an infinite number of um, of the biter queens and therefore an infinite number of biters and be self-sustaining. And I'm not going to have to worry about not being able to get hold of any more of those puffer eggs. So that that will actually be okay. I can I can leave that and if and if it'll carry on working. The next step up from that is then making the large biter eggs, and that conveniently is almost exactly the same recipe. It just uses a different type of um, a different type of puffer egg. So this uses a cor corrodent puffer egg uh, as, as opposed to an acidic puffer egg, which sounds like a similar sort of thing. Corrosion and acid being fairly similar, but maybe these are just slightly more so, and hence you get bigger biters. So I'm then again doing the same sort of thing, feeding them out down here. Um, the eggs are going down. Eggs are all going down here with some food being hatched, passing those over to, over this way. And as you can see, we've got quite a lot of the the large biters going on down here and a, and a bit of meat. And that again is doing exactly the same thing. And these two, if we ever get any of the queen ones, we'll put them in here, and they'll breed up in much the same way. But the probabilities are own. Oh, oh no, I've got three. But I don't tell you, oh, there's just no meat in here. Okay, let's let's nick some meat from this one. Put that in here. Uh, now that'll that'll run through and it'll produce some, some hopefully some more eggs and return the queens to me as well. So this is this is again is ticking over quite nicely. I'm just very very short of meat. So the the whole the theory here is generally is, is working quite well. I just need to massively upgrade my fish stocks. I did check the um, uh, the what do you call it, the uh, logistics network for any any other fish that are out there. And you can turn any type of fish into meat. And you can also turn the biters into meat as well. So the fact that I've got quite a lot of more here than I know what to do with. Let's take a few of them and shove them in, in here. There we go. That'll produce me another 85 meat. So that'll that'll give it a little bit of a boost, but it's not, it's not going to be sustainable like that. I'm going to need to get a much bigger supply of incoming food, essentially meat so I need to massively upgrade the fish farm over here um, unfortunately there's not really much space to do that I'm not sure where I'm going to do it maybe I'll move it down under, over here underneath the all the puffer business because all of this now has essentially has, has no not, not, not even essentially this has completely stopped uh, because my tanks up here are no up up here here we go are completely full I've got completely full of hydrogen fluoride, completely full of acid gas, so there's just nowhere for it to go. So it's it's stopped. Um, but I can extend the fish product production out quite a lot and have yeah, so I can put that in down here, I think. I'll probably do that. In fact that that's gonna be fairly easy. Let's let's get let's get make a start on it by grabbing all of that and putting in I think I can fit two copies in here. I think I probably can. Try not to damage any of the pipes. That'll do. I feel there must be a smarter way to do this, to fit this in. Um, oh, let's do that. I can put in under, underground belts as well. Okay. So those they'll get those built up, and I'll, I'll finish them off in a bit before the next um, episode. Another thing I've done um, is I've gone around and putting putting these icons on the map to give me an idea of where various things are happening around my base. Uh, the problem is though, if I zoom out far enough to see a decent amount of the base, the icons get so small that I can barely see them. So we've got yeah, we've got research going on here. You can just about make out the science pack icons across there. 
over here if i zoom in a bit more you can see we're um, dealing with all the ores here and all the metals i'm producing down here um, but it's not quite as useful as i hope because when i zoom out you can't see the icons properly other than that um, okay so once i've got the next two types of crystals being produced and what I've got along here is I've got I've made essentially made copies of this system here which is grinding up the crystal uh, sorry polishing up the crystals and making the nice polished versions out of the out of the raw versions so I've got an, an a, a, another version of it here it just fitted in underneath the station which is quite nice uh, I managed to make it a bit smaller and a bit more compact but it is still a bit of a mess of a mess of um, belts but then you've got quite a lot of sorting and splitting to do so I think yeah, I probably could make it a little bit smaller, but I don't think I could shrink it down an, an, an enormous amount from this. But again, it's sorting it into one, an, another one of these trains. So I need another train to carry this this back up to the base. Um, and then down here, we've got the same sort of thing. Another sorting system here, and then a tra and then a station here to pick it to pick up all the uh, all the crystals. So once what well, the next step is going to be to carry all of those up to here. Maybe I'll use this these stations actually to drop them all off, run the belts up, and then start trying to squeeze in more. Um, module production in here and unfortunately as usual I've not really left enough space so this is going to be a little bit tricky but I hope, uh, maybe if I put them just put the module production in here and put the sort of the the extra steps needed for the modules <sighs> I could put them on the other side of the bus I've been trying not to do that but I don't know we'll, we'll, we'll see what I feel like so yeah the main thing I've done since the last episode I think is this is this whole biter biter growing area down here. Um, I've also set up a couple of new mines because I was getting through resources at such a rate that well, if we come down, if we if, have a look down here, I needed to make a new crotinium mine. Um, not surprisingly, that's quite quickly filled up the chests here, and it's keeping that um, that nice and topped up. But that's that's basically what I want. I want it to keep I want it to keep the chest full, so that's that's fine. There's another uh, Jeevalite mine here, exactly the same sort of way. I think I put in another coal mine as well somewhere. Again, these are all things that I was starting to run out of. So, yeah, here we go. Here's the coal mine. All things are starting to run out of, so I've just gone in and slapped a few more mines down. And this this is all quite easy because um, they're all similar enough that I can just copy and paste the. In Oops, I can just copy an entire section like that, and that's now a mine that I could then drop in on on another ore patch if I needed if I needed more um, stereotype, for example. I could just paste that in here or here. The tricky part is is making sure it fits and it doesn't block the uh, the railway line. So sometimes it's easier to put them in in two parts, but it or sometimes it's more effective at least. I'm not sure it's easier. Unfortunately, Factorio doesn't have a flip blueprints option. That would be rather nice. You can rotate them, but not flip them. But then I suppose um, flipping them would would mess up or would mess up the uh, stations as well because they'd be on the wrong side of the track. So maybe it's a good thing it doesn't have that. So, I think that's basically everything I've done. Uh, again, there's been a bit of going around tidying things up and, and trying to fix bottlenecks and things. Um, one of my biggest problems at the moment is the um, aluminium production, which I can't find because I've turned station labels off. Um, here, here we go. As you can see, it's coming It's coming in fairly quickly. It's, um, how long is it? Yeah, 4.8 thousand. 4.9 thousand. So, it's ticking up relatively quickly, but the uh, low density structures use an enormous amount of aluminium. So if we look at the other end of this belt, uh, the limiting factor on this is how fast the um, the Jeevalite and the, and the uh, Rubite chunks are coming in. And this is a this is a red belt with the, with the two on it, with one on each side. So that's basically coming in as fast as this belt will feed it in. <coughs> so the limiting factor is simply that I've got this whole thi whole system specced up to run with yellow belts. Maybe the answer is to upgrade the entire thing to purple belts and just let it go and see how see how well it runs. Um, there are a couple of downsides to that. One is the sheer quantity of belts that are making up this machine. Um, it's going to take a long time to, for the bots to upgrade all of that. Um, but the other the other problem is that I designed all of this originally around having yellow belts. That said, I have since upgraded these to Mark Threes of all the machines, so or Mark Twos in the case of that one. Um, so. It's good. There's a reasonable chance that they'd still be able to keep it keep it running at that speed. So maybe I'll do that. Let's have a look. Let's see how many belts it would require to uh, to do to do that upgrade. So if I take this planner and go from about here to about yeah, about probably about here. Yeah, we're looking at 37. 37,000. In fact, 38, eight and a half thousand because of the uh, the reds as well. 
Um, that's a crazy quantity of pelts. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. That will, that's, that's absolutely ridiculous. Maybe, maybe I'll go in sort of slightly more tactically. Um, I've already done that a little bit. I've upgraded these, these belts here to purple, um, because they weren't, because it was all gumming up. Because there's the, there's multiple things pulling off it essentially. So we had the, um, the crystal, the leaching plants pulling off, what pulling off the belt, they effectively had these crushers pulling off the belt as well, because it's all crammed onto the same one. So if I came along here. And I upgraded this belt. In fact, that that's probably reasonable. If I upgrade that, and where is it? So that to purple, and do the same with the. Um, oh, and it have to be this this bit as well because um, there's no point in upgrading one side of it and not the other. And then um, do the same for the rubite. Uh, that's that. And then all of this. I'm upgrading a few things here that I don't st strictly need to, but where's the rubber? Ah, here we go. Um, but it's easy enough. To, it, the resources are relatively cheap. As long as I'm not trying to upgrade 35,000 of them or something, then it's not too bad. There we go. So that will now allow a significantly larger quantity of the um, of the ores to go through of the chunks to go through rather and I've already as you can see I've already upgraded the, the belts in, in here so that's that that should be all right um, and I've actually and that's obviously less than a thousand because I've got enough enough belts in my um, system over here to, to actually get that upgrade done okay so that's that's gonna work well I mean yes okay I could, I could upgrade them all the way to green but I don't think that's necessary at the moment right um, train of thought train of thought Okay, so that's that's basically what I've what I've been up to um, recently. The next thing to do is going to be to, as I said, to get these modules up and up and working. Um, for the more advanced ones, I'm going to need to look into um, getting gemstones up. So I think if we look at, for example, let's let's take the, the absolute top end one, speed module six. That requires polished diamonds as well. But most of this is just electronics components. So we've got solder transistors, uh, um, chips, and CPUs. Those are, I've already got all of. They're being produced at a rate that's not particularly great but it's it's okay uh, polished diamonds not a problem uh, sorry module contacts not a problem I'm building those already uh, speed processor boards that's the that's the tricky bit that I've been working towards and that's the one that requires these polished blue crystals so those are the ones that come from the big biters the diamonds are actually surprisingly easy I think because the diamonds if we just follow this back that comes from crystal seedling which comes from crystal slurry which comes from crystal powder Oh, from crystal powder. Okay, that's a bit harder. I was thinking, I was thinking crystal dust, because crystal powder is the one that comes from chopping up the um, the crystals. That's that's a sh that's a shame. Oh, is there an easier way? Um, ah, here we go. Yes, yeah, so it does come from crystal dust, and I've gotten I've gotten a um, unlimited supply of crystal dust because that's coming from over here. So crystal dust crystal dust production is not a problem. Um, I've got 133,000 of it at the moment. So that, yeah, that's absolutely fine. So, as you saw, that comes from the diamonds, come from, come from more diamonds, from diamond ore, from crystal catalyst, crystal seedlings I've got, from crystal slurry and filters. Those are relatively straightforward, I think. Um, Lumen is going to be interesting, but I think they're reusable. Oh, and you can do it from coal as well. So that, that's easy. Um, that's, yeah, all, all pretty easy. What about the grinding wheels are a solved problem, so I'm doing that for the other crystals. Polishing wheels. Oh, it's just steel and wood. That's fine polishing compound um, I have both of those things not in particularly convenient places but I do have both of them so I think that's that's gonna that actually actually I think is going to be the hardest part but yeah we can get that working and that's speed module 8 so the earlier ones will hopefully be simpler so for example number seven takes a topaz which is exactly the same thing goes back to crystal seedlings it's just a different different product of the um, from the crystallizers so I'm quite optimistic about that. I don't think that's going to be as hard as I as it first would seem at first glance. And once I've done that, I can start building up the uh, the ludicrous types of power armor. I think that's going to be quite good fun. Um, great. So that's been the last. Um, how long have I been playing for now? Okay, that's bit. So it's been 15 hours or uh, roughly since I launched the rocket. Um, in that time, I've launched 28 rockets in total. That's not, that's not too bad. Um, they are now basically self-sustaining. Self as long as I've got enough plutonium coming in here, 
this has run out of something. Oh dear. <laughs> it's always it's always these things that are the problem. I need to, I'll need to. Have, okay. Oh, it's this. Whatever this. Yeah, I'll need to go down and have a look at that. But basically, the rockets are quite happy to just keep launching themselves. I've got a nice supply here for making for making the satellites. Um, the rockets. Yeah, the rockets will just happily chug away, and they'll um, and they launch. The 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 fuel is still a limiting the limiting factor of building rockets. I. Oh, okay. Oh, now it's the oxidizer rather than the uh, the fuel that's the. Um, the slow part. That's something else I might go and have a look at. Okay, that's been a slightly longer episode than I intended because I started rambling about ra rambling about things and upgrading the uh, the belts and the um, metal production facilities. But still, I think that's uh, that's that's fine. Um, hopefully, that's been interesting. Uh, as you, as always, if you have any questions, let me know. But uh, now it's time to go off and sort out these fish and get all this get all this hooked up properly and get everything working. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.